let's talk about one more thing, okay? It is like, you know, um, exact with integrating factor. The idea came from um, integrating factor for the first order linear, right? So like the thing was like, we tried to make the product form on your left-hand side, right? By multiplying the like a new, new function, which is mu. We say it is integrated factor, right? We're gonna apply like that idea for the exact, okay? Even you're given, given a nonlinear, first order nonlinear equation is not the exact form, but like, you know, we assume like by multiplying some uh, integrated factor function that we can make it as the like partial derivative form on your left-hand side, okay? Then we can apply the exact, right? So like that is the idea, okay? So look at that. So we assume like there is mu, mu function, okay? So, but the, the thing is, your mu must be um, the function of x only, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about like function of y case only later, okay? But like first we're gonna start from, okay? We assume your mu is uh, like function of x only. Then when you multiply this one, look at that. So let me rewrite this one as like this way. Mu x times m, definitely m is x and y function and plus mu x n, n is x and y function as well and y prime or dy dx, doesn't matter, okay? That's it. So we're gonna say this whole thing as nu m, which is m tilde, and this whole thing as nu n, which is m tilde. Is that okay? So now like, you know, look at that next line. I'm talking about this guy. It's a little bit tricky, okay? But look at that. We assume mu as the function of x only, right? But m is x and y, right? So we're gonna take the derivative with respect to y, which means we can consider mu as the coefficient, right? So let me rewrite this one more time, okay? So I hope like this can help you a little bit more. That is mu x m x comma y and take the derivative with respect to y. And right-hand side is, again, mu x and n x comma y and with respect to x, okay? Look at your left-hand side. As I told you, like this can be written by just mu x is just coefficient n, m, y. Just take the derivative with respect to y for m only because there's no y term in mu, right? But what about your right-hand side? Ooh, mu x is represented like function of x and your n has x and y term in there, right? Which means, when you take the derivative of your, uh, with respect to x for your right-hand side, it must be the product form, okay? The first one prime times second one plus first function times second function, okay? So which is mu x times n plus mu times n x. You know what I'm saying, right? It is product form from calculus one product, uh, one material, right? And that's it. So like when you have this one, what we're gonna do is we have to set up this one as new differential equation for mu, okay? Then we're gonna leave mu x on your right-hand side, otherwise we're gonna move everything to the left-hand side, okay? So which means I'm gonna move this term to the left-hand side, okay? Then this will be written by uh, mu m y minus mu n x equal to uh, mu x times n. And let me divide by n on both sides, okay? Then let me write like in a different order. Let me write mu x first, okay? Mu x equal to mu m y minus mu n x over n. Is that okay? So like, you know, definitely this is separable, okay? We're gonna take, the, uh, well, at this moment, oh, give me a second. Like there is like mu is the common factor on your right-hand side and let me like pull that out. Then that is equal to, um, m y minus n x over n mu. That's what I'm saying, right? So that is definitely separable equation. Then we can solve this one by uh, take the integral, okay? So once you do, do, it, do that, and you can get a mu as a function of like this right-hand side, which is given here. So this mu is the integrated factor to make your left-hand side as the partial derivative, okay? So if you have like, you know, a mu as the y, the function of y only, then what happened? Like, you know, you have to consider your left hand, left hand, I'm talking about this guy, okay? Like, can you see the like, you know, the blue underline? That part will be the product form. Then you would have like the second one, okay? 
but this is not something, or we can rewrite this one as exponent. I mean, it might be better to write as e to the minus integral of my minus nx over m dy. Okay, then it's much more consistent with the previous, right? Actually, it's same thing, my minus nx over n, but it must be opposite, negative side, okay? It is came from the product of your left-hand side. Because moving is different, then they will be opposite sign. Is that okay? So we're gonna do like this, okay? So like, you know, but you know the idea, right? We're gonna look for this move, like we're gonna to try to uh, check it is the, uh, like a really, uh, like, you know, can be ex uh, exact differential equation by multiplying mu, then we're gonna find this mu function and we multiply this mu to the, your differential equation, give it a differential equation, and we can double check it is really, uh, uh, can be exact by multiplying mu, then we're gonna apply the same technique in exact differential equation, okay? So let me show you like one example, okay? Here we go. Look at this one. So let's start from here. This one is M, oh, well, before doing this one, 12 to the same, let me change this one as standard form by dividing dx on both sides, okay? That this can be written by, 3xy plus y squared plus x squared plus xy and dy dx. You are familiar with this one, right? It is standard form. And then, like we know, this is m. And this guy is m. Okay? Let me check. Exact, which means my must be equal to nx, right? So my is equal to 3x plus 2y and nx equal to 2x plus y. Ooh, they are not equal to each other. So which means it's not exact, right? Then we have to check one more time, one more thing, right? What was that? We're gonna check um, like, you know, my minus nx over n is a function of x only, okay? If this doesn't work, we have to check uh, my minus nx over m is a function of y only, okay? Like, you know, we have to check both of them if you fail, okay? And, but keep that in mind, this is college level math, okay? So we're gonna set up well, which means like a well-designed uh, problem will be given to you guys, okay? Since we talked about only two methods for the first order nonlinear, then one of them must be working, okay? So here we go. Then what is my minus nx over n? My minus nx over n is equal to, we found my, right? My is 3x plus 2y minus with parentheses 2x plus y over n, which is x squared plus xy. So let me simplify this, okay? It should be possible, okay? 3x minus 2x and 2y minus y, which is x plus y over, right? Look at your denominator. There is cone factor, right? Take that out. There we go. When you cancel this cone factor, then it is one over x, which is a function of x only. There we go. Then we can use this one. We can find the integrating factor with this one, right? Then, okay, here we go. Step three. Find the integrating factor mu. It must be function of x only, right? It is equal to e to the integral uh, my minus, let me write this one uh, a little bit bigger size, okay? So your mu must be function of x only, e to the integral my minus nx over n dx, right? It is equal to e to the integral. We found this already, right? It is one of x, right? And we are familiar with this one, right? It is equal to e to the ln of x, but you don't need constant, right? Because like this integrating factor will multiply to the like differential equation, then you're gonna cancel out all the co coefficients, right? That's why we don't need constant, okay? And that is equal to just simply x. Is that okay? Then we can multiply this one to a differential equation. Step four. Multiply mu x on both sides to the both side. Okay. 
the Bob set. Uh, my one is the of three x plus three x y plus y square. Then x times three x y squared plus y square. Oh, is that right? Am I right? Oh, three x y. Sorry about that. Plus y square. Plus x root plus x y. X times x root plus x y dy dx equal to zero. Okay. Now let me distribute this one. It is three x squared y plus x y squared plus x cubed x squared y dy dx equals zero. Then we can say this one is m tilde, which is new one, and this guy is n tilde. Okay. Then let me check one more time. Okay. But we trust like this will be happen, but you know, like for making sure, or like for making sure we found like correct integral factor, or like with which can check like you know we made mistake before. Okay, so check exact. For this time, it will be m tilde y equal to n tilde y. Right, so m tilde y is equal to three uh, x squared plus two x y. And n tilde x is, oh, I'm sorry, n tilde x, that's what I'm saying. n tilde x is 3x squared plus 2xy. There we go. They are equal to each other. And we can say this is now exact differentiation equation, okay? Then we're going to do the same thing, okay? Which one do you want me to start? m tilde or n tilde? Either way, it doesn't matter, okay? So let me try to use the m tilde, okay? Then what I'm going to do is step six. We have to find psi, right? So I can do it. So as I told you, we can start from m tilde for this time. M tilde is like, well, uh, no, 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 not here. Sorry about that. M tilde is over there. Okay. We know m tilde is um, psi x, right? So we're going to take the integral for this one. Okay, let me use the of just black color. Psi is equal to integral m tilde dx. Is that clear? So which is equal to integral. For this case, m tilde is 3x squared y plus xy squared dx. Keep that in mind. For this integral, y is the variable, okay? Uh, X is variable, right? I'm sorry. X is variable. I wanted to say Y is constant or coefficient, right? So you don't have to worry about like any like integrating by part one, okay? This is simple integral. Okay, let me show you, okay? It is equal to, uh, we can write three Y in front of integral X squared. And the second one is Y squared times integral. That's what I'm saying, okay? So that is equal to three Y times one third X cubed and plus y squared times one half x squared. But, and we have to add constant again. There's not only constant, but also the function of y term as well. So we can write as f of y. You understand, you have to understand this right, okay? Again, f of y includes the function of y and constant, is okay? So let me simplify. That is equal to x cubed y plus one half x squared y squared plus f of y. Is that clear? Then we're going to take the derivative with respect to y. Then that must be equal to n tilde, right? So here we go. Psi y, which is um, uh, x cubed plus uh, one half x squared times two y plus a prime y must be equal to n tilde, right? What is n tilde? Let me scroll up a little bit. There we go, x cubed plus x squared y. x cubed plus x squared and y, okay? So let me re re rewrite this one more time, okay? With uh, simplifying your left-hand side, is x cubed plus x squared y plus a prime y is equal to x cubed plus x squared y. There we go. Just compare your left-hand side and right-hand right -hand side, then we can easily figure it out. Your f prime y is equal to zero which means your f of y must be constant, right? Is that clear? Okay. Then finally, we can update my 
precise function. What was it? It must start from this guy, right? So that is psi x, y that we found from the previous step. Then can be written by x cubed y plus one half x squared and y squared plus constant c must be equal to uh, zero or constant, right? Another constant, big C, okay? Then let me move my constant C to the right-hand side. Then my solution is x cubed y plus one half x squared, y squared equal to, like big constant C. This big C is the combined one, okay? So this is the solution of the given differential equation, okay? Thank you.